Hello everyone and welcome back to Rick's Garage. Today's episode explores what's causing even more problems with the aftermarket clutch from spec. That is some sound. Imagine having to listen to that every time you hop in your car. Sadly, I don't have to use my imagination because that is the sound that Spec has been ignoring for months. Now that's a big enough problem on its own, but keep in mind that this is now the second set of issues I've had with this clutch. If you're not familiar, check out episode 15, which goes over the problem and solution of using a factory clutch master cylinder with Spec equipment. Anyway, back to that sound. Let's rewind a bit for context. That's me, back in episode 14, all excited to install my brand new spec clutch and proprietary steel flywheel. The parts were sourced from a really rad guy by the name of Corey from Two Step Performance. He'll come in later. Anyway, you guys watched the install video, nothing really out of the ordinary. Afterwards, the braking instructions were followed to the letter. Primarily city and or stop and go driving before full throttle engagement, drag launching or speed shifting. I bring this up specifically because in this day and age of YouTube and the do-it-yourselfer, why wouldn't a company be suspicious of somebody reporting a strange sound after completing their own install? They don't know me or anything about my mechanical ability. I'm just some guy wrenching in his garage. After the break-in, everything seemed fine until that noise started. It seems strange because it only shows up when engaging into first gear. It varies in volume, but what started out as a small chirp every now and then turned into a whine happening more and more frequently. I made a video of the sound and sent it to Spec describing the circumstances and asked if anyone else had reported the same issue. Well, the response I got floored me. According to Spec Tech, the noise that you've been hearing is definitely Kevlar squawk. It is just a friction noise. It does not cause any damage and will change and probably die down over time. I even tried my best not to get offended when it was suggested that I'm excessively riding the clutch which is contributing to the noise. Now personally, I've never heard of Kevlar squawk, but after googling it, it turns out it is a thing, so let's go with that for now. The clutch still functions okay, but the noise is getting worse. It's pretty embarrassing to drive your new car when it does that at almost every fresh green light or stop sign. As soon as Spec brushed off my concern, I went straight back to two-step performance. After all, my credit card bill didn't say spec on it, and fair move or not, I basically dropped this on Corey's desk and let him communicate with the company. Thankfully, he agreed to play middleman, but unfortunately, spec treated Corey like he was some sort of bad ex or something, like ghost. It would be weeks in between emails, and the standard response seemed to be, we're looking into it. So originally, my claim and request was simple. I purchased the clutch and flywheel combo, I received a defective clutch and flywheel combo, I want a replacement clutch and flywheel combo. I'd remove the defective equipment and ship it back once I received a replacement. Easy peasy. False. Thankfully, Corey kept at it and finally got some traction with spec. At first, they were only willing to replace the friction disc, which is really only half a clutch, and then finally agreed to replace only the clutch pack, leaving me the responsibility of getting the flywheel machined. Now, did the flywheel need machining? Hard to say, but I wanted a brand new surface for a brand new clutch. In hindsight, I can kind of understand Spec's reluctance to replace the whole purchase. After all, we still don't know 100% that the problem is the clutch, and these things aren't exactly cheap. Oh my. What I can't excuse is ignoring a customer concern for as long as they did. Nearly eight frustrating months had passed from the original report of the problem to when I had a replacement clutch in hand. The old saying of practice makes perfect is not something that you want attached to a clutch install. I had some deja vu of episodes 13 and 14 in order to find out what was causing that dang noise. I only have one word for what I found when the first clutch came off the flywheel. Vindication! No, those aren't the rings of Saturn you're looking at. That's the pressure plate after the friction disc has been ground into it for thousands of kilometers. What would make a friction plate behave in such a way, you ask? Well, when rivets that hold things under pressure decide to give way, it causes some unexpected results. This clutch assembly was flexing so bad that it even left some cool racing stripes inside the transmission bell housing. 
Now, I'm no engineer, but this thing looks like it wasn't that far away from catastrophic failure. You can see how badly cooked the edges of the friction pads are. So after all that time and trouble, it turns out that it wasn't Kevlar squawk after all. Now, keep in mind, I am the first person to agree that any product manufactured on an assembly line by machines, you're bound to have some bad ones. It sucks when you get a defect, but it happens. That's life. However, how a company chooses to treat a customer who received that defect, especially after money has changed hands, is what's important. If this was some cheap no-name clutch off of eBay, I would expect very little in the way of quality and warranty, but when you're shelling out as much dough for these clutch combos, I expect much better than what I got. After all the dust settled, I ended up with a replacement clutch that's so far nice and quiet. The credit for solving the problem goes entirely to Corey at Two Step Performance. Now there's a guy who knows how to do business and how to treat customers properly. Corey, if you're watching this, again, my sincerest thanks go to you, sir. And spec, if anyone from your stupid company is watching, you can take a lesson from Corey and shame on you for dropping the ball and making this situation harder than it had to be. That's what she said. Now, this may sound strange after listening to me complain for the last six and a half minutes, but the purpose of this video is not meant to prevent people from buying spec products. My goal, as with all of my videos, is to provide information and to share an experience. What you, the viewer, decide to do with that information is completely up to you. I hope you found this video helpful, or at the very least enjoyed the little bit of drama. And if so, drop a comment and a like, and while you're here, subscribe with notifications so you'll always be up to date with new content. I'm Rick the Welder, and as always, thank you all very much for watching.